sound waves like to hit things that you know that are nice and even like you know fat they don't want to hit things that are oval or round that upsets them and causes them to not go in their intended path so that's when you start seeing these ad artifacts so hard to see enhancement without edge shadowing usually they go hand in hand um, and you can have edge shadowing along a mass that shadows as well you just can't really see it distinguish it apart from the shadowing So we call these attenuation artifacts. Um, the next group. Uh, this is based on the premise that sound attenuates at an even rate in the tissue. So attenuation is a sound wave loses strength as it travels through the tissue. Um, and what hap happens in reality is sound actually attenuates unevenly within the tissue. Um, it attenuates differently within each separate structure or tissue type. So different tissue types attenuate more than others. Um, and this results in our attenuation artifacts. So um, in this case, there's no uh, type of um, attenuation artifact below the mass. Where here, it's brighter below it, which is um, enhancement. Where here, um, it's probably a combination of enhancement and also this edge shadowing. And then here is shadowing. So these are all the different ways that we can see this. So in a enhancement, um, the ultrasound beam encounters a structure, um, and there's no attenuation of the sound beam through the structure. So cysts, or anechoic areas, don't attenuate sound usually. So you'll see this bright enhancement. And you're almost always going to see your edge shadowing along the edges of that. Um, so here it is again. Here's our cyst. There's no attenuation of the sound wave through this cyst, which creates this bright echo behind it, which we call enhancement. And you're usually going to see your edge shadowing along the side of that. Uh, we also call this increased through transmission or posterior acoustic enhancement. So it looks like when you're looking through a mass that someone's shining a flashlight down through your mass. And this is usually a very benign finding. Um, things that don't attenuate sound are, are non-dense structures. And you have the opposite of that. Your really dense structures in the breast are going to attenuate the sound a great deal. So a sound wave hits this structure that's really dense. A lot of attenuation occurs in this area, and you get a big dark shadow posterior to it. Now, posterior to this, there's probably some edge shadowing, but you can't see it in amongst all the normal shadowing. Mm-hmm. Very good observation. <laughs> and that's just simply because these structures are not as dense as the bone. The bone is a lot denser, which is why you get that white you know, line around it. And so we also call this decreased through transmission or posterior acoustic shadowing. So what shadows on an ultrasound? Uh, Cooper's ligaments are the biggest, most notorious thing. So Cooper's ligaments, we learned, are these white lines on ultrasound. The white lines, the ligaments that support, you know, hold up the breast, the framework of the breast. When we don't have sufficient transducer pressure in the breast, you'll get this line of shadowing that comes down from the Cooper's ligament. So it's one of the things we're going to practice next week. Light transducer pressure versus firm transducer pressure. If your transducer pressure is not firm enough, you're going to see lots of shadowing coming down from the Cooper's ligaments. Because it comes off the edge of it. It's actually a form of edge shadowing. Of the, of the actual ligament. So you have your ligament traveling along here, and along the edge you'll get your shadowing of it. You know, or you might get a Cooper's ligament traveling like this, and you'll get shadowing along the edge of it. Yeah, or just sometimes we only see a piece of a ligament in the breast, just because they, like this one here probably travels up here, but the way that it, 
is in relation to the sound wave. We just aren't seeing that part of it. So you may get a shadow off that portion that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. They weave all in and out of the tissue. So the slice you're in may only be looking at part of it. We cannot. Nope. The only time we ever see a lymphatic system is when we look at lymph nodes. We can see lymph nodes, but that's all we can see. We can't see lymphatic vessels or anything like that. We can see the result of lymphatic vessels. Uh, like when cancer invades the skin, it invades, it obstructs the lymphatic vessels in the skin, which causes edema on the ultrasound. So you start getting a really thick skin layer, lots of edema inside of it. We'll learn later when we get into pathology what edema looks like on ultrasound. But no, we can't see the actual lymphatic vessels themselves. Mm -hmm. yep. And we'll, we're going to go a lot more into that later. All right, so we also see a shadowing posterior to glandular tissue. So um, glandular tissue is white and glandular tissue is dense. We know that's the dense, thick tissue of the breast. So dense stuff shadows on ultrasound. So we get posterior to glandular tissue, we get shadowing. Um, if you have a big, thick layer of glandular tissue um, in the breast, sometimes the whole area underneath that is just completely shadowed out. Um, sometimes it's just because your transducer pressure isn't enough. Um, sometimes it's because your, your settings on the ultrasound machine are wrong. So we'll learn we're, we're going to get into next quarter um, how to get rid of artifacts on images and stuff and, and for anyone who takes scan lab with for this class. But know that glandular tissue is a notorious shadower. So you can see, like in this case, here's our glandular tissue. Here's our shadowing posterior to that glandular tissue. And you can almost turn this into a mass in the breast. So one of the things that new breast sonographers do is things that should shadow, they don't realize they should shadow, and they turn those, those artifacts into masses. Also, the nipple can shadow, and it depends on how we look at the nipple. So if you put the transducer right smack dab over the nipple, here's your nipple. You won't even hardly see the nipple on ultrasound. You're just going to get this intense shadowing. And because the nipple is so dense and so thick um, that you get shadowing. Um, if you kind of roll the nipple over on the transducer, you can kind of come from the nipple from a side view. We call that the rolled nipple view. We're kind of rolling the nipple out of the way. Um, in this case, you're going to have your nipple here, and you'll just have edge shadowing. So you can see the tissue below the nipple a lot. So when we're evaluating tissue below the nipple, we use, often use both views because we're trying to see this tissue. So it's always tricky to get around the nipple and see things around the nipple. So takes a lot of practice to figure out how to see things behind the nipple with all the, the shadowing that occurs back there. And then ribs. Ribs, um, huge shadowers. So, you know, we will see a lot of ribs uh, shadowing posterior to ribs, which is one of the reasons why we like to turn them into masses in the breast because they look big and dark and scary. Um, so remember, you're always looking for your pectoralis muscle. You know, where, where are you in relation to your pectoralis muscle? If what you're seeing is below the pectoralis muscle, you know that's your rib and not something in the breast. I, I would say within a year of picking up the transducer, you, you, you understand these things, yeah. But it takes time. Yeah. yeah, and looking at pictures to say, oh, okay, I remember vaguely remembering that somewhere. She's talked about that. So hopefully I'll be in your guys' heads. No ribs. <laughs> so look for your pectoralis muscle. All right, and then Doppler artifacts. This is our last category of artifacts. Um, so Doppler... <clears throat> and ultrasound um, is where we pick up blood flow. And um, so 
what Doppler thinks is that blessed blood vessels always course straight in the breast. They never turn or move in a different, they move in a straight line. Um, they're always the same width throughout the vessel. Um, the velocity in the vessel never exceeds what we call the Nyquist limit, which is something we'll learn about later. Um, the Doppler angle that we're coming from is always exactly 60%. And then the patient is always stationary, meaning holds exactly still while Doppler is being performed. No, so these are the assumptions that our ultrasound machine makes. So what really happens is that patients move. We get motion artifact. Um, blood vessels curve and are torturous. They're curvy. Um, blood vessels can have narrowing within them. We call that stenosis. Um, also, velocities in a vessel can exceed the Nyquist limit. Um, it's not possible to always obtain a Doppler angle of 60 degrees, which is what we want. And then also your, your machine settings can be improperly set. Um, so this is what happens in reality. This is what ultrasound machine wants to happen. Um, because of those things don't always happen, um, you get all these types of Doppler artifacts. <coughs> so the first one is aliasing. Uh, so on an ultrasound machine, there's something called the Nyquist limit. And uh, for uh, Doppler, what we're trying to pick up is the shift in frequencies um, in a Doppler. Um, so the Nyquist limit is the upper limit of that Doppler shift that the machine can pick up. Anything above that limit, the machine can't really pick that up and we get aliasing. Um, <coughs> so the machine has a limit of how high the velocities are that it can measure. Anything above those velocity levels, um, you, you can't uh, measure. And the Nyquist limit on an ultrasound machine is half of the PRF. And we'll learn more later exactly about what that means. But uh, basically what aliasing means um, is you start seeing colors that are not the color you should be. So here's normal and here's aliasing. You're getting all these artifactual colors. Um, and you can also see it um, on spectral doctor with your waveform. So here's normal where you can see the whole waveform. And then here you're starting to cut off part of your waveforms. So these are forms of aliasing. Nyquist limit, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, sort of. Sort of. And we're gonna, we'll learn a little bit more about that later. But basically what you guys need to know is there's a max limit that the machine can pick up as far as velocity. Anything above that, and you're going to start getting artifact. And the artifact we call aliasing. And it usually presents as either artifactual colors or your, your waveform will not be displayed all the way on your, on your bar. No, you can just with this, you, anything that looks like this, you know, this is what we want to always see. Nice, even color throughout. So we're not going to really get into that, but we will talk a little bit about it. Just there's like two questions on the breast test. But no, we won't actually get into that very much in lab. We're going to do a tiny bit. All right, the next artifact is called spectral broadening. So when we put our spectral Doppler on, this is what we want to see in an artery. We want to see something called the Doppler window, which means there's this nice anechoic portion in our waveform. Uh, spectral broadening means we lose that. It starts getting filled in with, with, with uh, signal. Um, and it's an artifactual signal. Um, and what this is telling us is there's turbulence in an area. So um, we don't really get too much about this in, into this in in the breast because we're not looking for turbulence but you should know that sometimes just your machine settings make things look like this your gain your doppler gain is too high and that type of stuff so we'll learn a little bit about optimization uh, this we see a lot in breast imaging this is motion or flashed artifact we it's a type of noise artifact um, and this is extra echoes within a color or a power Doppler box. We mostly see it with power Doppler because it's very motion sensitive. Um, and this occurs when the patient, the transducer, or the anatomy is moving, such as the heart or the lungs. And 
um, instead of just getting your Doppler signal, you start getting all these extra echoes within the box. And then noise. Uh, noise is also a common artifact that you see in breast imaging. Um, this is when you have a color or a power box up and you get extra echoes outside of the true color signal. So this is the true color signal. And then you have, this is the true color signal, and you have all these extra echoes. Uh, usually it means that your gain level is set too high and different things like that. So we'll learn a little bit more about that second quarter when we get into scanning. You can get something called crosstalk. This is a mirror image Doppler artifact. So he, the top line is what you should have as far as your waveform. This bottom line is your mirror image artifact. And it's usually caused by improper settings on your machine or you have um, an incorrect Doppler angle. And you can also have color bleed. And so for an optimal vessel, you want to see a color that looks like this. There's no color spilling outside of the vessel. When there's color spilling outside of the vessel, we call that color bleeding usually due to um, improper Doppler settings. And then we can get twinkle artifact. Uh, this is actually a type of reverberation artifact for Doppler. Um, and it occurs uh, posterior to a really strong reflector. So in the breast, we see it behind big calcifications, behind um, biopsy clips. You can see it uh, behind gallstones or kidney stones. Um, and you get these artifactual bands of color that radiate down. And they're very strong color. So sometimes it's a way of finding little tiny gallstones on the gallbladder. Mm -hmm. And then improper Doppler angle. We aren't really getting too much into this in this class because we don't really do much Doppler and breast imaging. A spectral Doppler in breast imaging. We do color and power Doppler primarily, but you should know that when you're doing spectral Doppler, um, it, you know, it, angle matters a lot. So your ideal angle is always zero degree, but it's really impossible to obtain. Um, so we use angles between one and 60 degrees um, is what we want to use. Um, Anything over 60 degree, you start getting errors um, where the velocity that you think your blood flow is traveling at is not actually the, the signal that you're getting. So it underestimates or overestimates velocities. Um, you can get that spectral broadening artifact where it fills in your, your Doppler window. Um, <clears throat> also, it's hard to reproduce stuff like that in future studies. Um, and if you get a 90 degree angle, you get no Doppler shift at 90 degrees, so you get no information. So angle really matters when you're doing Doppler.